everyone i thought today we could do something fun or i could do something fun which is set up this beautiful ceramic palette that you can find now in my shop there are two variations and this one i've used for a free class actually i will leave the links below and you can sign up and I have a class, it's part of a paper craft summit, but my class is watercolor, it's all about watercolor, and it's really, really fun, easy, uh, kind of an hour-long class, and you don't need anything except watercolors and paper, and there are a ton of other paper craft related classes that you can get free access to for it's like a limited time but it's for free and then if you want um, like lifetime access I think it is then you can buy the VIP access and I do have a class there and I am affiliated so if you sign up for the VIP class uh, I do get a portion of that but I'm just like you know I, I'm go there get the free stuff and you know if you sign up for the vip i really appreciate it and i thank you very much but i just want you to get some free classes because we all love that <laughs> so check the link below it's between the 16th of august and the 20th of august and there are just like a ton of different subjects and like topics and classes so it looks like a lot of fun this one is you can see it's a bit larger and then this one but it has less wells so this one has 20 wells this one has 24 these wells are flat and they measure around two to two on two and a half centimeters these wells are slanted you can see hopefully camera focus and they measure two centimeters on three centimeters so um yeah i don't have very very strong preferences but the idea here with the slanted ones is that you can also put your paint I mean you can put it's it should be like a little bit gentler on your brushes because you know you can just like pet the paint and you don't have to dig in but you can also put your paint close to the edge and then the um, like contaminated water would just run here where you can like pick them up later and your paint will remain cleaner so you know you can choose what you like this one has room for more paint and so this one I think I will leave it kind of as a go-to yeah I don't know what I'll do with it maybe right now it was like for color stories so I have one color story at the top row and then another color story here and yeah so I have here my watercolor tubes and these are not all of my <laughs> tubes I have a few more but those are colors that I really really don't use so I put them in a different place these are the colors that I use more often but probably if I did dug through it I could still find colors that I hardly ever use so I thought we could just load this baby and oh the links to these will be at the bottom they cost 36 dollars plus shipping and the shipping is between like two and five dollars depending where you are in the world and they come really really well packaged so um you know they won't break on you unless the post is really 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 violent and in that case just email me and uh I will take care of it. <laughs> so, um, my this is a insert from IKEA, and it fits into my Alex drawer unit, which houses my uh, paintings and uh, palettes and all of the watercolor stuff. And it's divided uh, by color. Now, I want to start with two kind of obvious choices for me which are, I don't know, is this, is the lighting situation okay? I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe like this. I know the camera can't catch everything. I've been using my big studio palette here and I really, really enjoy, I mean, there's nothing like mixing watercolors on a ceramic dish. Okay, so I'm going to just squeeze out a little bit of white, which I use. And I don't want to fully load 
this. I want it to be easy to clean out. So this is Opaque White from Rembrandt. The pigment is PW6 and it's a good white. It uh, activates really nicely. It doesn't crumble like gouache, which would be a good alternative um, because gouache, you can find like a very opaque white, but if you're using gouache and you like using gouache, I recommend just squeezing a, a little bit uh, when you need it instead of housing it in your palette. I have a full pan of white that is already, it's very, I've hit pan, I've hit pan on my white here. Uh, this is also the Rembrandt and that's what I usually have in my palette. So next I'm going to add Buff Titanium which is a color that I like to use. This is the Daniel Smith one. You can see it's already a little bit uh, oily. Uh, I like to use this to kind of muddy up other colors. And I'm thinking this is calling me if I should add gold. <laughs> uh, maybe I should add a little bit of this. This is liquid charcoal from Schminke. And I don't know if, let's, I'm going to add a little bit here. So I'll probably have the dark colors, my darks uh, at the bottom. So this one is here. And what else? I'm just looking at my neutrals. I have another color that, there are 24 here, so I think I can be a little bit generous with my choices. This is gray titanium from Daniel Smith. And I think these are the light colors. I could do maybe earth tones. Nah, I don't use so many earth tones. Okay, so moving on. This I know I want. This is my beloved Naples yellow reddish from Lucas. And then this one I also love. This is the Naples Yellow from Schminke, which is my favorite. And then we have the... Ugh, always forget how to call this. So I'll just say this is Brilliant Gelb. <laughs> I'll say the German name because I can't, I can't remember how to pronounce it. Jaune? No idea. No idea. So this is from Shinhan. This is the uh, Brilliant Yellow, translated number two. And this is a really nice, I'm very into kind of pastel -y colors. Might also add shell pink. And then with my yellows, show you the yellows that I have here. Okay, let's start with, I mean, who am I kidding? I'm gonna need Naples Yellow, so let's just add a, do a dab, a dab, a little dab. And we all love a good color talk, right? <laughs> and I'm definitely going to add this, but the question is if I want this in the middle. I do like this color. See how it looks? It looks like this. It's a very pastel -y color. Okay, so I think this will come next. I love this color and Lucas uh, I don't I'm not too crazy about their color range but if you find colors that you like and for me it's the Naples yellow reddish and the cobalt turquoise these are so affordable especially for a cobalt this giant tube this is 20 24 milliliters this is about 10 or 11 euros in Europe or in Austria and I challenge you to find the cobalt for this price and this size tube. So that's that. There you are. And let's put a little bit of this color here. Very, been painting very kind of pastel -y, um, color palette. Okay, let's talk yellow. Let's see what I have here in my palette and I'll tell you what I think about them. Okay, so I have Quinacridone Gold 
from yeah I have quinacridone gold uh, from Core and Daniel Smith. I love quinacridone gold. I don't have such strong emotions. I know they changed the pigment. Uh, this is PO49. I think it used to be PO48. Uh, I'm not so particular with this color as I am with others. And what I like about the Core, the Core is the one that I currently have in my palette, is that Core kind of pushes other colors away. And I really like that effect because I love to sprinkle yellow into my paintings and yellow is a very light color that is very easily muddable. <laughs> it gets muddy, muddyable <laughs> very easily. And so having that quality in a yellow, if you like to use it like I use it, is very, very helpful that it doesn't um, get muddy because, you know, you sprinkle it and it just pushes away if your watercolor is wet, if you're sprinkling it into wet watercolors. Um, and so I like the shade of both of these, but I prefer the formulation of core because it's a pushy color. Uh, but core colors are pushy with other brands. However, there are certain pigments within brands that are also pushy, uh, like Nickel Azo Yellow. I have to say Nickel Azo Yellow is my favorite yellow. This is the Daniel Smith one, but I think every brand makes one. And I will buy if I I think if Rembrandt makes Nicolazo yellow I will buy um Rembrandt the next time I run out just because Rembrandt is European it's local to me it's cheaper I don't have to pay import taxes um you know and shipping to like I do with Daniel Smith paints that cross the ocean to me and yeah so I love Nicolazo yellow it's a very kind of earthy um almost like almost greenish but in a nice earthy way not like a lemon yellow that is uh, a bit like garish sometimes in my personal opinion this is just my opinion don't be insulted if you love lemon yellow and I think this is a beautiful beautiful yellow for florals landscapes all that and it's a great primary yellow to have it's very transparent and very intense and yeah just very versatile but I'm not feeling it these days. And so I'm going to put it aside. And I'm also going to put the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Gold. And I'm going to look which other yellows I have. So I have a couple here from Rembrandt that are new to me that I haven't been able to really get to know them. So this one is Transparent Oxide Yellow. The pigment is PY42 and yeah that's all the information here and then here I have gold ochre and the pigment is PY43 and and so I'm thinking maybe I should just you know try them before um, just like give it and go so and get lots of binder so I'm going to take a picture also of this <laughs> so I can remember and then with the gold ochre yeah why not let's give it a try and I'm going to swatch these for you this looks actually nice this looks like I could enjoy it in my current state of mind. Okay, that's a lot of yellows and we're not even done because we have the quinacridone yellow. Okay, so three more yellows that I think I'm going to skip because I'm not sure I'm in the yellow, this kind of yellow these days. So I'm going to add a little bit of quinacridone gold because I know I want it and love it. And yeah, so I have here Indian Yellow, which is a mixture of three pigments. I have here Turner's Yellow from Schmincke. This is Core. This is Schmincke. And I have New Gamboge from Daniel Smith. Uh, I love all three of them. And I used to use uh, New Gamboge and Indian Yellow a lot. These are very uh, warm, orangey yellows. You know, think sunflowers, 
you know, that kind of like sunshine yellow. And I do, I, I, I use them a lot, but I don't know if I'm feeling it right now. So these are definitely colors to explore. Uh, Indian yellow, also New Gamboge. How many pigments do you have? This is, I think two, two yellow pigments. I don't really mind um, like single pigment or not. Yeah, and Indian yellow is also very, very orangey yellow, which I also enjoy. Now, this one is an interesting one. This is called Turner's Yellow, and this is by Schminke. And this is, if if you like yellows and you haven't tried this one, I suggest that you do. This is something between Naples yellow, so it has a bit that opacity and a bit of that creaminess, but it's slightly more intense. And I don't want to squeeze it out now, but the pigment is PY216, 216. So it's a single pigment yellow. And I think this would be a really interesting primary to use in your palette. And um, yeah, I, I think it's a really nice color and I don't think a lot of brands have it. So Schminke's Turner's Yellow, try it. Okay, now I have here kind of reds and oranges, which I hardly ever use, but let's see. I'm not gonna talk about all of them because that is going to... Aussie Red Gold, this is one of the um, kind of newer colors in the Daniel Smith range. They came out with it in 2017 or something, or 18. And this is a little bit, some people love it. For me, it's a little bit too, too orangey. Lunar Earth is a super, super, super granulating color and I have a video dedicated to it. And I am tempted to put it in my palette because it's so granulating, but for now I'm gonna resist that temptation. Now, a few colors that I really like. Let's see. Lunar Red Rock is another very granulating. It's like, um, Slightly less opaque, extremely granulating version of Indian Red, I would say, or yeah, Indian Indian Red. Thinking between Venetian Red and Indian Red, but somewhere there, and it's it's a really interesting color. I think if you kind of mix it with white, you could get very very beautiful pinks. So maybe I'll actually do that because I'm very into kind of pastelli like washed out colors with a lot of granulation. So maybe the lunar red uh, rock is a good uh, option. Okay, this is a color that I really love and I used, uh, this is I think my second tube. And it's just a unique color. This is Sennelier's Rose Dore Madder Lake. I also love the name. <laughs> and it's just kind of like this orangey reddish, slightly pinkish color very very beautiful i don't know maybe i should you know go back to to the old hits but i also suspect this would be really beautiful mixed with white so i don't know maybe we'll leave it at the maybe maybe pile and then i have this cadmium red and i have from holbein cadmium red light I do like these kinds of red. I don't like any, um, I, I, I really like, let me rephrase that. I really like, if I'm using red, I like the orangey reds. I don't like any of the like, you know, more neutral primary reds or pinkish reds like alizarin, crimson, or any, I, I really, really don't like those colors. I just go pink. Uh, but right now, I don't know. Again, I think with white, they would probably work for me now, but not a must. Okay, I have here some kind of intense colors, Deep Scarlet, Perline Maroon, and Perline Scarlet. And these are all lovely. Um, I don't know if they're, I don't know if it's, does it say if they're granulating? Hmm, I do like Perline Maroon, that's a fantastic color but I don't know if I'm feeling it. I don't like to add colors that I like just in mixtures. 
So that's where I'm torn. And Pyrrol Red Light is again this kind of orangey red. This is from Core. It comes in their Earth Earth set, Earth Tone set. And yeah, it's it's nice. So, okay, I think I'll just give a squeeze of the Lunar Red Rock. Why not? Let's do that. See what happens. Okay, so <laughs> my pink, <laughs> my pink um, drawer is very full. So I have your shell pink, which I like. So I'm going to add it. And it's just like a pretty color. Hello binder. There you go. This is Shinhan Pass. Um, these are called hybrid colors. And yeah, they're okay. And okay, so I'm taking out Bright Rose. I have a lot of pinks. I'm not going to talk about all of them. But I'm just going to grab what grabs me. Okay, this one I think can go to the Cemetery of Paints. Mm. I don't know, this is, I think this was a fail for me, this pink. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm loving it. This is Lucas Genuine Rose. I should probably try it again, but what do I have here? Permanent Matter Light. Yeah, I'm not feeling these. I think the only cool yellow, so like bluish yellow, I currently want in my palette is Bright Rose. So all of the other ones are not, not speaking to me these days. So I'm not really going to pay attention to them. Uh, this is dusk pink, but this is this would be one of my darks. I also have the magenta from Lucas. I'll show you how it kind of looks. You can see it's a very purpley. I don't know if you can see, but it's a very purpley. pink and again I don't know how I feel about it the pigment is PR 122 kind of a standard pigment um, maybe Ooh, this is a color I like the naphthamide maroon that's a good one but let's just go with my instincts carmine is another beautiful beautiful very luminous more uh, warm pink and I have used it quite a bit recently but today I'm not feeling it so what do we have here uh, quinacridone rose is another kind of all-time hit but yeah I don't know I'm feeling like I have the, the Windsor & Newton Potter's pink should probably get rid of it because I don't like it. Mm. So shell pink I put. And this was Lunar Red Rock. I have to <laughs> remember these. Okay, this is a really, really old tube that I should probably... This is Rose Matter Genuine. And it's kind of dying on me. Open. Okay, I can. Probably all the paint will. How do you look? Mm, smells very good. <laughs> Let's sniff some paint. I don't even know, do they put the year on these things? Because this looks, you know, it's the old packaging from Wizard Newton, which I kind of wish they could, would go back to. Hmm, what are you? How are you? Hmm, you look kind of pretty. I don't want you to be neglected before you die. <laughs> I think just the cap is dying, not the, the paint. The paint is actually really nice and juicy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Potter's pink. Okay, no, I have the Luna Red Rock, so let's leave it. I'm just going to squeeze out some bright rose for a very pink obsessed person. 
I am very calm with my pinks today. Okay, leave them out. Why is that so hard to remember? Okay, moving on to the violets. You know what it's going to be. Wisteria. Look, I have wisteria here in my big palette. I squeezed a bunch of it. Um, I love this color as it is, but when you start mixing it, it just doesn't perform as well as something like cobalt violet, like a good pinkish, uh, an, a well-formulated pinkish version of cobalt violet that is not too weak. And it's just, this one is great for me personally. This is all my opinion. It might work really, really well for you. This is just too white. It has too much white in it to kind of be a, a, <laughs> a contributing member <laughs> of mixes. So while I do really like this color, I don't actually think it has a place in my palette because I mix cobalt violet a lot or I mix this kind of color a lot. It's a main color in my paintings many times and yeah, it's just it's it's just not going to do it. So, I am going to need some Could I be out? I have this. This is not looking very full. Is this a moment of crisis? Did I not replenish? Okay, I think I think I'm in trouble. Wow, very unexpected. Okay, oh, okay. So I have, I know this, I bought a pen to see if I prefer the pen version better, but <laughs> that means it doesn't really work in this kind of situation. So not great, not great. Um, I have in my pal, in my stash also the core one which I didn't like at all. This was full of binder. And then I have from Dollar Rowney, I have their Cobalt Magenta, which is very interesting. Uh, the problem with, with this one is that it's like mostly granulation. There's like very little color, but there's a very strong granulation. So maybe I could, maybe I should just do some mixing and create my own concoction and maybe that would work. The Cobalt Violet Light Hue from Sennelier is not bad. Uh, it's a more affordable option for sure, but it's not great. And then I have from Holbein, 